Thank you, Carlos. Uh, good to be here. The last uh, speaker has been uh, quite phenomenal in what he presented to us uh, uh, in the audience. Um, so I'm not going to be able to compete with that. But uh, what I have done, I, I before I started, uh, was invited to participate. I'd written an article on my blog about DeepSeek as it came out, fairly long article. Uh, so I thought I'd do a presentation today. But um, so I asked DeepSeek to write my presentation for me, um, which I managed to do. And I'm just going to put that on the chat now. Uh, so that's DeepSeek's presentation. I'm not going to uh, share it with you. You can read it there. Uh, but I'm just going to go through some of the points that DeepSeek makes on my behalf uh, in relation to what we've seen over the last uh, few weeks with the announcement of DeepSeek's R1 and its uh, other associated AI models. It clearly has been a disruption to the AI landscape without doubt. Uh, it may not be a Sputnik moment or it may not uh, even be a, a Linux uh, moment, but it's certainly something which has attracted the attention of everybody to the question of artificial intelligence and also just how that is progressing, uh, in what direction it's going and how China, at least with DeepSeek, has opened up a, a breakthrough, it seems to me, in us to look at AI models, comparing them to the existing American ones like OpenAI, Anthropic and Meta, which are uh, have dominated the AI uh, scene at up to now with chat GPT and other models which are available at a price if you want to actually use them effectively. I, um, I tried out DeepSeek uh, recently in the last uh, few days. I asked it all sorts of prompts and questions in relation to, and the opposition to Jack GPT and other models. And I have to say that nine times out of 10, it was just as good as if not better than the American proprietary models which are offered to you. And as has been made all clear up to now, this is an open source AI model freely available for anyone to use and develop. And it's been uh, developed and trained up at a fraction of the cost using older and less advanced GPU chips. It's not using the latest ones. They're not available to China. Uh, but it has uh, been able to develop this model at a cost of something like six to $10 million compared to $100 million when it comes to AI, open AI, and other products uh, on the American market currently. And given the, compared to the expense which uh, these these American uh, AI companies are going to be developing over the next period, it is a tiny uh, process. Now, Radhika mentioned that Stanford uh, University has come up with an even cheaper AI model based on a similar approach to DeepSeek. All I can say from that is, if that's the case, it's fantastic news that it's increasingly reducing the cost of using these things for the average person. They can play some role in, in developing uh, uh, and improving the efficiency of the things that they do and to make them more effective and more qualitatively have a better performance. Certainly, uh, when I'm looking at my um, uh, deep seek presentation, it looks way better than the ones I could produce. Um, and I, it, one of the things it mentions is specifically with, with uh, images is how much being, is being spent by the competitors on expensive state-of-the-art chips and massive da data centers. By the end of uh, this year, I think we'll be getting hitting one, $1 trillion worth of expenditure by the Magnificent Seven companies uh, in, on the, in the direction of AI, which is a, it's a massive amount of money being spent in this area. And yet we now know through DeepSeek and possibly other models that competitive AI models no longer require such exorbitant uh, spending. And more or less, they don't require these huge data centers, which are sucking uh, environmental uh, resources out of the economy. Massive water is required to maintain these uh, systems, uh, these data centers. Huge electricity costs are rising. This is a damaging factor towards the environment. Uh, and yet, uh, th these uh, proprietary models are really no better no more advanced on the whole uh, compared to a very cheap product uh, like a DeepSeek. Open source, allowing transparency and collaboration and not locked uh, in a black box, but available to people to develop themselves. In a way, I, I, I could see it as a sort of um, uh, analogy between 
pharmaceuticals who have all these branded products which they keep under their control through intellectual uh, property for ages and generic pharmaceuticals which are incredibly cheap and are freely available or much more available to uh, the population at large not just in one country but internationally in this way if we can develop ai models which have open source which are cheap then it democratizes the whole process of ai development and reduces the dependence on these big american tech giants no wonder the immediate reaction of the stock market in the us to the news of deep seeks uh, development and uh, launch was a dramatic drop in the stock market price for a period of time the magnificent seven lost 700 billion 750 billion dollars in one day on the announcement and what investors are worried about of course is that huge amount of spending by the Magnificent Seven on infrastructure will not deliver the returns that they expect and will hit profitability. And that will therefore mean that the competition provided by these cheap models will make it impossible for these companies to last. Now, I'm gonna come back to the question of why that investment is continuing despite that news and why the stock market is recovered uh, despite that news in a moment. But I think we have to remind ourselves as other uh, speakers have said already, that this achievement by China has taken place despite huge US sanctions on trade and technology, trying to halt China's progress in AI and chip development. And that uh, companies like Hawaii have managed to go continue to develop as a competitor now to NVIDIA in chips. And it's really down to the fact that we've had a development uh, of these AI models in China based on huge support from the state, state-led guidance and investment, although uh, DeepSeek is a private company run originally by a financial uh, analyst who developed this. It's been based on open source. It's been, as other speakers have mentioned, a wide range of people involved in it, and it's been supported and developed uh, with the backing of the state itself. And, uh, it's worth quoting, uh, I think, Ray Dalio, the American uh, Bridgewater billionaire, that's the biggest hedge fund in the world, who said what uh, Deep Seek demonstrates is that capitalism alone cannot win this battle, this uh, battle of AI, this battle of hegemonic control uh, by US imperialism. It's not going to be enough. It needs the state to intervene, says Dalio, the hedge fund uh, found, uh, uh, biggest hedge fund man in the world. That's an indication of the reaction that he's got uh, to the result of, of Deep Seek. And I would say that one thing that struck me when Jingjing was speaking is that I disagreed with President Xi. President Xi said that um, if China can do it, then any country in the world can do it. Well, I don't think so. Uh, you need to have a different social structure. You need to have a, a basis for a planned economy, state-led investment, to provide the resources that are aimed at meeting uh, people's needs rather than just meeting the profitability of a few uh, elite companies. And at the moment, there are no countries being prepared to operate on that basis, which is why China has made such huge progress, not only in taking people out of poverty, uh, hundreds of millions over the last 20 or 30 years, but also in extending its manufacturing base and raising the level of productivity and living standards in that country. You only have to compare it with India in 1980, when China was actually at a lower level of uh, productivity and living standards than even India. And now you compare India to China, and the, that's a startling difference which has been achieved. It's a different way of organizing society, which has led to this achievement by China culminating in this particular deep seek. And coming back to the environmental costs, I'm, you just have to be staggered at the impact that uh, the Magnificent Seven's huge data center building, which is going across America at the moment, the energy consumption of these AI models. For example, uh, ChatGPT, every time you go on ChatGPT and prompt it, it uses 10 times more energy than just a search on Google or any other search engine. And the training AI models uh, through these uh, more expensive methods, proprietary methods, is 6,000 time, 6, times the energy of a European city. That's the indication of how much these data centers are consuming in terms of energy. Massive amounts of water necessary for cooling, which has already caused problems in certain areas where these data centers are operating. 
Um, but nevertheless, the market has not gone down after that initial shock. And the investments are continuing despite the competition. Why is that? Because um, Sam Altman spelt it out. He's the former or head of OpenAI, originally set up to be a non-profit uh, AI development company, but now converted into a for-profit company backed by Microsoft. Sam Altman has said that what we're aiming for is not just nice uh, AI models that are, anybody can use in their in improving their productivity, their levels of uh, activity and their uh, quality of life. What we want to achieve is artificial general intelligence. We want to produce an AI model which is more super intelligent, beyond the level of human intelligence. And that when we do that, this AGI, as they call it, will solve all our problems. It will take over corporations. We won't need any staff at all. And it will enable the... Um, the big companies to have complete control of their operations using uh, this super intelligent model. A very dangerous thing, not only the question of the loss of jobs, the increased inequality that will never see flow from that, but also the existential risks that you will have been in a position where you have machines that are not really in control of uh, humanity at all. As one commentator said, this race is a race towards the edge of a cliff. However, I think we'd have to gladly say that it's extremely unlikely that such a human super in intelligent AI model can be built and will ever be built because really when it comes down to it, we don't have that uh, machines as the last speaker pointed out, these AI machines are really just maths. They're not creative human intelligence, which has taken uh, which goes beyond just the level of mathematics or patterns. It develops new ideas, new approaches, which cannot be achieved by these AI models. Deep Seek's vision for AI is somewhat different from the others. It focuses on social needs, not profits. It empowers small developers and users, and it reduces labor hours and can potentially enhance creativity and the quality of life rather than just the profits of the big companies. Um, so in conclusion, uh, DeepSeek tells me on my presentation that uh, its impact is challenging the dominance of US tech giants. And the key takeaways are AI development can be cost effective and open. Environmental and social costs can be addressed and dealt with. And AI can serve humanity rather than just corporate profits. And actually what it also shows as, uh, as mentioned by Alan earlier on, that the future of AI lies in collaboration, not competition, bringing together people across countries, across organizations, in order to develop these new forms of technology, which can enhance the quality of life for the 8 billion humans we have in the world. Those are the potentials of AI. We now enter a battle between uh, the Magnificent Seven, who wants to make money out of this at huge amounts to drastically reduce uh, uh, the creative jobs available to humanity and at the same time, as the last speaker points out, generate and accelerate the possibilities of AI-developed wars and other military activity. And the alternative is collaboration, cooperation and the development of new technologies which then benefit the, uh, humanity as a whole. That's the conflict that is going to develop over the next few years and onwards as we see how the AI um, industry and its uh, development takes place.